right? And I'll start sharing, just make it easy. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining today. We'll wait a couple more minutes before we get started. Uh, feel free in the chat, let us know where you're joining us from. I'm here in Portland, Oregon. It's kind of a cool day today before it hits 90 again next week. All right, I'm going to get started. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I am recording this and welcome to the Better Together Promoting Drupal webs, uh, webinar. I'm Kelly Delaney, the Director of Development at the Drupal Association. There is a question box that you can ask questions throughout the webinar. We will hold and answer them until the end of this presentation, or I might just uh, get in there and reply sometimes if it's uh, quick. And this webinar is being recorded and will be emailed out afterwards to, and it will be shareable. And let me introduce our hosts for today. Please welcome Suzanne Turkachiva, co-founder of Evolving Web and Rosie Gladden, VP of Marketing at ImageX. Rosie, I'll pass it to you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Rosie, VP of Marketing at ImageX, as Kelly mentioned. We're a design and development agency working exclusively for Drupal, servicing organizations globally across a number of different sectors. Uh, we've worked with Drupal since 20, uh, 2006, 2006, and I've been part of the Promote Drupal um, committee since 2020, contributing, contributing on the evaluators committee and helping bring the new brand to life. It was, uh... And I'm Suzanne Degacheva. I run a, an agency called Evolving Web. Um, if you haven't heard of us, we're, we've also been around for almost 20 years now and um, very dedicated to the Drupal space. Um, in addition to leading Evolving Web, I uh, run the Promote Drupal initiative and I'm the marketing lead for, uh, for Starshot for the Drupal CMS club. So we'd like to kick things off by really um, rallying all of you together around the value of marketing Drupal. And I, I know there's probably a lot of you who work at Drupal agencies that invest a lot in marketing for your own company. Um, and of course, that's something you're going to do, but we also want to encourage you to get together and join forces with other agencies in marketing Drupal as a product. Uh, now, why would, why would you do that? Why is that beneficial to agencies? Why is that beneficial to uh, evolving web and imagex and all of our um, fellow drupal agencies out there um, so it's it's uh we're, i'll talk you through that but uh, as some context there is a drupal brand that exists that's been um recently created and um it's a it's a rebrand you've probably seen hints of this if you're on linkedin um and today we're going to really be talking about how how we can get that brand out there and how we can better support that brand. So as, um, as, a, as a platform, Drupal is open source. And that inherently means that there are all kinds of people in the world using Drupal. And there are also agencies like ours that are supporting them. And uh, the real message of, of today's presentation is about how we can get more people into this ecosystem. And that means more end users, more clients using Drupal. I think we can all agree that would be beneficial if there were more people demanding Drupal services. Um, but at the same time, I wanna encourage you to think about how it's beneficial for all of us also to have more supply, to have more agencies, more developers actually supporting Drupal. Um, because Drupal is open source, there are going to, there's going to be this market for it that exists. Uh, and just having more people in the ecosystem um, overall is really beneficial. There's a cycle that we can encourage um, by marketing Drupal. 
so as Suzanne's already shown, um, we're very much kind of better together. Um, although we're competitors, we all want the same result for Drupal to continue to grow and bring more organizations to the community, um, which would mean more pie for everyone to divide between ourselves. So looking to move from competition to cooperation. Um, so my experience as an agency marketer trying to sell Drupal to primarily other marketers, um, we come up against the same issues regularly, one of which has been the perception of the brand. Um, I won't go into that into detail. We're all familiar with the challenges. Um, so the more content that helps dispel those myths and helps market Drupal, the easier all of our jobs become when selling Drupal related services to non Drupal users. Um, so to put it into numbers, there's currently 92 of us um, in the Drupal Certified Partner Program. Uh, that's grown from 45 in 2023. Um, so if we all put forward just one piece of Drupal first content a year, that's 92 pieces of fresh content annually for the DA to use, um, which is over seven months. So we're all already creating content. It's just a matter of adjusting that focus um, and sharing that with the DA. Um, so being able to better promote Drupal is very much a case of, you know, the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. Um, like I said, moving from competition to cooperation. So how can we do this? So, so Drupal, uh, like I mentioned, is really bringing, bringing value by connecting users. If we looked at, um, if we look at Drupal purely as a product and uh, we said, you know, uh, tomorrow Drupal will not be open source. It would lose so much of its value because it would use, they would lose that whole ecosystem of people who can support it. That lack of vendor lock-in that is so valuable to our end users. Um, so how do we strengthen um, Drupal's ability to connect users, to connect the people who want to build a, a platform on Drupal, who want to build a website with Drupal, but who are lacking the skills to do it, who want to be connected to um, the supply of Drupal talent. Um, Drupal.org is clearly a focal point for these connections. You know, if you're uh, looking at implementing a Drupal website or you're looking for services for an existing site um, and making sure you can support your website rather than moving to another system, likely your journey is going to go through drupal.org. Uh, and so it's just inherently a place where the Drupal market uh, lives and operates. Um, events are also really key touch points for knowledge sharing because if you're looking at implementing Drupal and you haven't done so, if you're exploring, it's likely that you'll uh, at least consider going to an event to learn more, to take a training, to meet potential vendors. And the certification program that some of us agencies participate in, the Drupal Certified Partners Program, this really strengthens this ecosystem and the ability for um, suppliers, uh, Drupal vendors, and people looking for Drupal services to get matched up. If you look at you know, how you make a decision about um, an Airbnb that you might want to stay in, it's likely that you're looking at ratings and you want to know that this, um, this person you're, whose place you're going to stay at uh, has been certified or has somehow been validated by a review. Um, and so the certification program uh, acts as a way to for, for vendors to see uh, what services are available and to have trust in the fact that Drupal is supported. Um, there's also innovations obviously happening in the Drupal community now to lower the barrier to entry and get more people in the door. So a lot of a lot of work happening here. Um, Drupal CMS, the new product that's coming out of the Drupal Starshot initiative, is specifically designed to lower the barrier to entry and get more end users in the door, more marketers, more content people really feeling comfortable with uh, the, with Drupal and being able to use it easily. And the new Drupal.org redesign that's underway, which you'll see the results of soon, this is also going to lower the barrier to entry. It's going to encourage uh, evaluators to, who come to Drupal.org to learn more, explore more, um, and 
to see Drupal as a very accessible brand and something that they can uh, relate to and compare with other content management systems or other platforms. That's all, that's all great. We have Drupal.org, we have events, we have the, the redesign, we have Drupal CMS coming out. I think there's a lot to celebrate. There's also a lot of challenges because marketing Drupal is not just like marketing a product where there's one company owning the product. It's a, a, a big open source effort. Um, and there's a lot of very specific challenges. One being that the Drupal Association is, is tiny. It's like 15 to 20 um, staff members and you know, not all of those are people out there marketing Drupal every day. It's a, it's a very small team um, and a lot to run in terms of events and, and Drupal.org and, and everything else. Um, so there's a couple things that we're going to talk about that community members can get involved in. Um, one is a, a big effort on event marketing to actually have Drupal have a presence at events outside the Drupal community. So not just to say, okay, we're going to run DrupalCon, but actually we're going to get a Drupal booth at an event like Web Summit. So pictured here is the, the booth at uh, Web Summit, which year uh, was in Portugal and you know this is uh, a brand that we can take out into the real world we just need to co coordinate efforts and and get folks out to you know staff a booth or uh, run a presentation about Drupal. Um, another big effort that's underway uh, another challenge is that uh, the Drupal.org itself, like it's this great tool for building connections, but it's also, it plays a lot of roles. It's a, it's a place where collaboration happens, contribution happens. It's a place where people um, can evaluate Drupal, but they uh, can also um, uh, come there to become a partner, become a member, and um, participate in community activities. Um, so there's a lot of content on Drupal.org to, to handle. Um, and so one area of that that we're going to delve into today in a bit more detail are uh, Drupal case studies. So um, on Drupal.org, there are many, you can go into the case study section and you'll see there's all these filters that you can use to, um, to uh, filter down what you want to see, different types of case studies. But it's kind of overwhelming the number that are there and not all of them are relevant. Um, if we want to really support evaluators deciding on a CMS, there's a lot of work we need to do to clean these up and to better orient them around the needs of, um, of, uh, of those end users. Um, so I think I'm going to pass it off back to Rosie to talk about how you can get involved in some of these efforts. Thanks, Susan. Um, so yeah, so we wanted to give you today some tangible um, things that we can all do as, as Drupal partners. Um, so firstly, we're looking at case studies. So um, one of the ways we can better promote Drupal is help build out that repository of recent case studies on Drupal.org. So in order to show expertise and how Drupal can be used for different use cases, build that trust and credibility around why Drupal's best fit, explain some complexities that prospects might not be sure how to solve and ultimately create that social proof um, through the case itself, but also potentially testimonials if you have them um, to be used. So when creating case studies for our own organizations, um, you may already know that it's best practice to put the client as the hero of that story. Um, you might take a storytelling approach um, and highlight how your team helped your client with their challenges, goals and achieving their results. Um, however, when we share those stories on Drupal.org, um, often we see a copy and paste of what's used on our own site. You know, we're all guilty of that. And the why Drupal aspect is often missing. So it's important to remember that the case studies on Drupal.org have a different use case. Um, so we're moving the focus away from the service, so the work we do with clients, um, to the product itself. So how does Drupal help um, that organization? So 
as Suzanne mentioned, the newest iteration of Drupal.org is built uh, to encourage more traffic from those non-Drupal users and those evaluating Drupal as a platform. So we really want to help them see themselves and the challenges they face within the case studies that are used on the site. So the filtering that you saw earlier helps with the industry that they might work in, but the content itself is how the product can, um, or how we can show that the product can resolve those challenges and meet their goals. Um, so on the following slides, I'm covering some areas um, to consider when adapting your case studies for Drupal.org. And I've pulled a few examples where um, DCPs have already created content that puts Drupal at the center. So you might see yourself in there. Um, so firstly, one quick win is to review your existing case studies, but also think about this in future ones about the title that's used. So when creating a title, um, often a case study will just use the company name or something quite generic like Drupal 7 migration that doesn't necessarily give um, more depth. So add, just adding a little bit more description within the title itself helps showcase the key reasons Drupal's the best fit for an organization. So here I've pulled a few examples that call out Drupal's strengths and requirements that the prospect might have um, or might be working to meet such as you know, multilingual, multi-site, governance, and how um, Drupal can help deal with large bodies of content. So fairly subtle, but um, just that small tweak can really make a big change. Secondly, I've pulled um, one of Evolving Web's case studies that looks fantastic, so check this one out. Um, so the government of Yukon, uh, what I've pulled here, I've highlighted it in pink, is the really great opening summary and overview, which details um, why Drupal was the best solution for the organization and their industry. So even this subtle change, by opening the case study with the high level content around why Drupal, it switches the focus immediately from the agency to the platform itself. Next, I've got the Union of International Cancer Control. Uh, this is from 1X Internet. Again, really lovely case study. It's got some really great things happening. Firstly, uh, one of the pieces I've pulled here is a quote from the client themselves. Uh, they include a mention of Drupal, which is the ultimate social proof. Um, if we're able to build in additional quotes in this way, I know it's not always feasible, um, but the DA can even pull these quotes and use them as social posts uh, and within other marketing campaigns, obviously with permission, of course. And secondly here, I pulled an example on the right um, of how we can consider the layout of the information itself. So to break up that big body of text, um, in this case, uh, a nice table just showcases the features of the project, um, giving the key points and it's easily digestible. Um, so this style could be used uh, to focus, uh, showcase sorry, uh, the key aspects of the project specific to Drupal um, and in different ways. And then my Final example is Penn State. This is a media current case study. Um, so within the back end on Drupal.org, when you create a case study, there is a why Drupal section. So this shows a really nice example of how this was used, just some clear bullet points um, of why the client selected the platform. Uh, often we've seen just a, a single sentence about why Drupal is chosen. Um, and this is a, a really nice kind of more in-depth example. And secondly, I really, loved seeing this piece here where at the bottom where I've highlighted how the case study links out to additional resource where Drupal's features and benefits are explored further. So in this case, it's a webinar with the Drupal Association about how they worked with Drupal and Gatsby to create a scalable solution. So like I said earlier, I imagine every agency has a huge amount of content that you're all working on um, day to day. So if we can bring some of those additional pieces in as well, that's always nice. Um, Plus, um, so once you've reviewed case studies or potentially added new ones, so obviously uh, the fresher, the better, um, we can also submit those for promotion on social for the DA to use, um, primarily on LinkedIn in this, uh, in this case. So this helps promote your work through the Drupal ch channels, meaning additional content for the DA and additional promotion for your organization. So win-win in this scenario. Um, and then social posts can be submitted through this form, which is available on drupal.org forward slash marketing. So in summary, um, review your existing case studies. Um, hopefully you, you've got new ones coming up. You can add them. Uh, case studies more than a few years old will start being archived. So it's really good to uh, keep up dating those as regularly as possible. Uh, within your content, focus on the benefits of Drupal, 
you know, why would somebody use Drupal over another platform and put Drupal as uh, the hero of your story, um, hopefully alongside your client as well. Uh, submit that social content and help us share far and wide. So um, case studies can be uh, put through your, I think it's the owner of your organization profile can post them. Uh, any issues, uh, I've just added here the partnerships at email. So um, Kelly has very kindly said she can help out with, with these, any issues that might arise. Um, so finally, uh, so as we mentioned, you know, some an initial thing is to create those Drupal first case studies and help us really build out that repository on the, the new iteration of Drupal.org. And then Suzanne mentioned around the opportunity to help promote Drupal through event marketing. So this could be putting forward session submissions for different events. Um, we have a brand uh, branded new branded deck that will be available in the dam. Um, and then even organizations grouping together to to take a stand on um, behalf of Drupal at a different event. And I think Suzanne, you were gonna add a, a note about that one. So I'll pass back to you. Yeah, absolutely. So we are, um, like I mentioned, there was that event last year, I had the, the photo of the Drupal booth. Um, we're trying to build on that success. So uh, in September, there's a high ed web conference in Albuquerque. Um, where there were already several partners um, attending with booths. So the Drupal Association is, is partnering with the Hyde Web Association and there's going to be a Drupal booth at that event. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll have uh, some printed materials there, uh, a presence, and uh, if there are other similar events that you think Drupal should have a presence at, I really encourage you to raise your hand uh, in the promote Drupal Slack channel. Um, you can go to drupal.org slash marketing at the link there. And uh, you can, you can uh, let us know, you know what events you wanna participate in. There's also an issue on drupal.org where we have uh, a spreadsheet of events that we're considering. Um, but I, I think, you know, a lot of this, is going to come from the agencies that want to be out there at these events and um, want to contribute not just the presence of their agency, but actually have have Drupal there. And if you've attended these events, there's often booths for other CMSs. Um, and so I think it's uh, actually stronger to come there and represent Drupal than to, to only be representing uh, your agency. Uh, likewise, if you have thought leadership on your team, like you have a, someone who's out there evangelizing for, for Drupal, maybe doing technical presentations. Um, we'd love to have more folks uh, presenting about Drupal at conferences outside the Drupal space. So that could mean, you know, um, maybe showing off the new, the new Drupal CMS or um, uh, showing a case study for something that you've created at a marketing conference, but really highlighting the Drupal aspects of the project and how Drupal enables you to do, um, to do marketing better. Um, so th these are all, all things that we'd like to help support and coordinate. So please come to that uh, Promote Drupal Slack channel and uh, let us know what you're thinking of doing. Um, there's slide decks available. There's materials we're developing. So. Um, we want to make this uh, more impactful and really help amplify what agencies are already working on. Please, um, I will open it up for questions. And to start us off, I just had a uh, some common questions I get about case studies that I I mean, can share while we have the time. Um, a lot of folks ask, how do you actually, from like the homepage, get to case studies and how to upload one? And from these drop downs, um, case studies. Uh, the good thing about the uh, case studies is I'm going to add a case study. It has a template for you. And so, kind of, Rosie went over oftentimes, I do see people copying and pasting from the format of their case studies into the case study format of drupal.org, but it, it would, it will 
behoove you and give you a leg up to actually read them and answer the questions to how we've asked them. I think it makes it a little bit more readable for the end user who's reading it. So why Drupal is a great one. I kind of liked Media Current. They made it really simple. They just bullet pointed it. If a lot of, I do hear a lot of um, agencies say we actually don't have a case study writer on board. We don't have um, the marketing uh, capacity for this, but I think bullet points are great if you need to summarize and not worry so much about like this really big writing project. Do you two think uh, agree with that or have any other tips on that? Ah, sorry. Yeah, I think, um, you know, kind of less is more in terms of the uh, layout. So keeping it really simple, um, bullet points are always a great use. And I think more often than not, we're all creating this content anyway for our own sites. And that's why we've seen the copy and paste because people don't want to duplicate work. However, um, you know, you could just take 30 minutes um, to just adjust it. It doesn't have to be a full overhaul. It could just be slight tweaks. You know, there are AI platforms now that we can utilize to reword things, obviously review them before you um, post anything, but that's always a, a way of maybe um, speeding up the process as well idea sometimes it's just a matter of rewriting a couple sentences to mention how drupal really enabled the project or why you know why drupal was a great fit over another platform and um you know one or two sentences to set the tone can really make the difference in terms of positioning drupal and i'll take you to some of our we call these pages uh solutions pages or there are vertical pages so up in use cases i went to education so our certified partners do get the benefit of having their case studies featured on these pages. They get the most traffic rather than just going to case studies. A lot of our, our uh, people evaluating Drupal will come to a use case and be like, oh, I am a healthcare organization. Let me see the healthcare uh, case studies. So um, these are the three that are featured right now from different um, agencies. We have the agencies, it will show it here, who it was built by, and then also, when you're a certified partner, this is a, lead, a little lead form. So if someone is thinking, oh, I would like to hear more from this um, FFW1 really is um, more directed at me. It's, I want to hear how they did it. This will go in and go directly to the agency to give you that potential lead and talk more with them. And I would just add that um, I had referenced the work that you know, there's been a rebrand for Drupal. That means Drupal.org is being updated, and iteratively, iteratively, um, the design of a lot of these pages is going to be improved. One thing that we're trying to do is, you know, positioning case studies on Drupal.org in a way to make that storytelling more engaging. Um, and so I think you'll see more benefit from having case studies up there because of how they're going to be um, displayed in a really nice professional, uh, modern way. That's great. Also, uh, can, you did talk about drupal.org. Do you have um, a timeline for when the Promote Drupal team will be working on that? And are they also looking for more people to join Promote Drupal to help with that? Yeah, so, um, so the timeline <laughs> is uh, for, for DrupalCon Barcelona, you can expect some updates. Um, obviously, Drupal.org is a huge site, so it's a big, a big project with a longer roadmap. Um, but uh, likely, the marketing pages will be um, updated first. So, uh, between Barcelona and you know future future events, we'll have a lot of a lot of updates happening. Awesome. Um, and then your other question was how to get involved in in that. So every Thursday. Um, so earlier today, for example, we had a, we have a async meeting on um, on the promote Drupal Slack channel. Um, so if you want to get involved, we try to post something some things every week that you can get involved in, um, some things that are a bit easier to contribute to. And then if you are really wanting to commit a bigger chunk of time to do marketing for Drupal you can also raise your hand there and we have other opportunities for like bigger, bigger chunks of work. So if you want to contribute design or writing skills, or if you're, um, we have a social media team 
Um, if you're looking to contribute to social media every week, we've got um, lots of work that we can carve out for folks depending on their skills and how much time they have available. Great. Well, thank you both for joining me on this. This was really exciting. I like the topic of case studies because uh, again, as you both mentioned, it's just so fresh. That's how we get interest from people evaluating Drupal and events. I know a lot of agencies are going to events that we don't know about. And so also having um, just better, the community is better together, um, having a little bit of Drupal. Visibility there is always great. And we'll wrap it up here from here. And thank you both for joining me today. Thank you, everyone. Bye, thanks, Kelly. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. I don't know how to stop. I'll cut this off, but <laughs> folks, stop recording. Okay, I'll have to stop recording that.